we over talk one another, people, the listeners won't be able to hear anything. So we're, Perfect. Okay? Yeah, that's fine. Don't ramble on once you've made your point. <laughs> we got to move on because, yeah. again, it's radio and, you know, we want to just get the, the, the basics, the facts of what it is that's going on, what are the pros and cons, <clears throat> so we can educate the listeners on what exactly is the off-ramp and what does it mean if we take it, what does it mean if we stay kind of thing. Okay. So, and then maybe um, I'll go around and you can introduce yourself. Okay. If, if okay. You're listening. You're listening to KOYC Radio 98.5 FM. I'm Janet Wilson-Smith and I'm here with a panel today and we're going to talk about Black Hills Energy and the off-ramp, whether we should take it, whether we shouldn't take it. So I have with me, and I will let them introduce themselves and give a little background, but we have three panelists here, and thank you, Manny, for filming today for Facebook, for our, our audience there. Um, just a little bit about KOIC. We're a local radio station. We only serve Pueblo. It's a low power, so, um, but we try to educate as much as possible through our shows, and so because the people are going to be voting on May 5th, we thought it was really important to give that information out so that we have a you know, well-informed group. If they're going to make the decision, they need to know what does it mean if I say yes or no. So let's start with Randy. Yeah, I'm Randy Thurston. i uh, born and raised here in Pueblo. I've been in real estate for 42 years. Uh, city council for eight years. Uh, did a talk radio show after that. And just 100% committed and concerned about the citizens. Okay. That's what this is about. Great. Uh, I'm Steve Andrews. I uh, live in Florence, upriver. I'm a Black Hills customer up there. Um, I'm uh, semi-retired. I do some work in um, uh, a... <laughs> Everybody <laughs> mute their phones. <laughs> My name is Steve Andrews. I'm from Florence, upriver. Um, I am a Black Hills customer. I'm semi-retired, used to be an energy consultant and writer, and um, I am um, uh, still involved in some family real estate business. Okay. Nice to have you. Thank you for coming. Jamie. My name is Jamie Valdez. Um, I am on disability because of an on-the-job injury to my spine. However, I'm working on getting back into the workforce, and as such, I, I am employed currently by, with a company called We Own It, mm -hmm. uh, and we, are, we work for um, Energy Democracy. It's, uh, we work with elect rural electric co-ops to bring energy democracy and energy justice to their uh, member owners. Um, I'm a lifelong Eastsider, born and raised. Um, now that I'm fully grown and have my own kids and stuff, I am also a Pueblo Eastsider uh, Pueblo East Side homeowner and okay. Black Hills Energy customer. Okay, and me and as well, living on the East Side. So, so yeah. So it sounds like we have some expertise. So let's uh, hello and some good background. So this should be a lively discussion. Um, I guess the biggest thing is <coughs> who, which one of you wants to explain the off ramp? Because I'll, I'll do the best I know, and that's that somewhere along the line they signed a twenty year contract. To bring Black Hills in to take over the power. And I don't know what the options were then, but I thought that was a bit risque, just the whole thought of giving somebody 20 years um, that wasn't even in the state, let alone the city. So, let me ask um, you. yeah, let me just finish. So, and then halfway through at the 10 year mark, and maybe you can help with this, there were some restrictions or some guidelines or some criteria that said we could take this off ramp, which means we could get out of the deal providing certain conditions I think weren't met. So, uh, do you want to sort of you expand know, I, on that a I, I can, Janet. I was on city council from 2001 to the beginning of 2010. So this took place right afterwards, the, the council that followed. And um, the off-ramp situation was negotiated. The initial proposal was uh, for the 20 years. Uh, council came in and said, let's make it a five uh, in, Fifteen years, and then the twentieth year, and the tenth year, that we have a chance to make a shift. That we can, you know, look at some things differently if things aren't working well. 
So now we're coming up to that that first mark where we can go off ramp. I guess my question is, were there specific things in the contract that they either had to be negligent on, or did you have the option, regardless of whether they were performing, who do you want to answer? Um, real quick, I'd like to just uh, correct something. Um, the five and 10 year, or the 10 and 15 year right. off ramp options are actually written into state statute. It wasn't city council that put those in. That's okay, state statute. so that's the state law. Right. Okay. Regulated by the PUC, Public Utilities Commission. Okay, so they didn't just decide that. That's good Correct. to know. Okay. So we had to. So, was there something, Steve, that you know that maybe they had to do or not do to um, affect this off ramp? Or? Essentially, if you're if you're not satisfied with the service you're being provided for whatever reason, in this case it's cost mostly. Uh, you can um, uh, elect to take that off-ramp opportunity in either the 10th or the 15th year. At the 20th year, when the, when the deal expires, uh, you can also, of course, renegotiate or leave or whatever you choose to do at that point. And I, I should add that uh, the um, 10th and 15th year take an active uh, step, whereas in the 20th year it expires and you create a new franchise agreement which is brought to the people for a vote. Okay. Right now, upriver, Canyon City has an expired franchise agreement. It expired in November of 2017 and they're still operating under that franchise agreement even though it is expired. And who do, who do they use? Just curious. Black Hills. Black Hills. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they this, didn't sign another contract. They're just going month to month or uh, year to year? Or the, essentially, yes. Okay. They've negotiated a new, new agreement. We brought some issues to their attention. They've decided to wait to see what Pueblo does downriver before okay. they uh, have the, hold their own vote. Okay. So then... You know, if we're looking at, so it sounds like the state gave us the option more or less to get out. So it sounds like it, you know, wouldn't be that cumbersome legally. But yet, you know, we're always uh, looking at Boulder and what happened up there. And, and uh, it's been a long drawn out process. So let's start with, <clears throat> I guess, the people understand we have the highest rates here in Pueblo, and we have probably the poorest population. So this is one of the things I think that's driven this. We need to get out of Black Hills because they're not compassionate, they're cutting people's power off, and then there's fees, and then extra things they have to pay. So if you don't have the money to pay your bill, where do you get this money kind of thing? So I think there's a lot of disgruntled people that might be just willing to say, yeah, let's get off. But we really need to take a hard look at what does it mean, what are, what are, what are the criteria that might not be favorable <coughs> to, to doing this? So let's start with, uh, maybe Randy, you want to talk about something that you don't feel comfortable with, with the whole off-ramp? Well, you know, what's kind of interesting is on the surface, it looks like it's a simple thing. You know, we're not happy, we, we want cheaper bills, we want all that. Yeah. And then the reality is there's thousands of details that would need to be talked about. One of them is the rates itself. You know, the whole issue that this is going to uh, instantly just decrease in, uh, uh, rates and if you vote for this May 5th, all of a sudden the next bill you get, the rates are going to be cheaper. That's my biggest hang up with the perception because the perception is not true. Every, okay. let, me, let me finish just with that because again, there's going to have to be legal processes, there's going to have to be condemnation, there's going to have to be all, all of this, so many unknowns and then so when you really look at it, let's say it's five years from now, which is their best case. Nothing's going to change for five years. Then at that point, if it goes ten years, uh, whatever it is, then you calculate what the cost of Black Hills is going to be. So then you end up happy to buy that. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows what the, the bond rates are going to be ten years from now. You know, Let, let's ahead. give the audience a little bit of what does it mean to take the off ramp? And I don't know if anyone here is. What are the costs? And I went to the uh, Rioja event that they had at the library where Nick Gretesar talked about what he thought the, the cost was going to be because we have to take into consideration they're losing business. They have assets here that we have to take over. There's grids, there's generators, stations. And, and so what are we looking at at the very least? 
I don't know, Steve, if you have a... You mean a tab? Uh, yeah, what, like what, what the cost ballpark, because I think it came up to $432 million was the high end if we bought the generating station. No, no. you talk? No, no. it would be much higher than that. Okay. Right. The, uh, Randy's right, we don't know what the cost will be. Uh, it is a bit of a gamble, um, and there is risk with that. I don't, I don't contest that point at all. The reality is that, though, today, the reality is that we live with very high costs, yes. um, and that and that is is motivating us to look at these options. The cost of these options will be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. But then you have to say, which option are you going to take? Are you going to take the Pueblo City breaks away option, or are you going to take the Pueblo and Pueblo County breaks away, or are you going to take the entire service territory, which, by the way, it stretches from Cripple Creek to West Cliff, Canyon City, and downriver to Rocky Ford, and so on. It's a there are 96,000 meters in the service territory. There are 250 million dollars a year, which are paid, which are collected by Black Hills uh, from those 96,000 accounts. Uh, that money goes to South Dakota. Some of it comes back. A lot of it doesn't. The so, which of the options are you going to take? Any of them will be at least hundreds of millions of dollars. Then there, that's just to buy the distribution system. That means the p wires and the poles and the substations and the electrical widgets to run the system. If you're buying the generating system as well, it costs considerably more. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, the tab would be in the hundreds of millions, and I would point out that Black Hills turned down an offer uh, back in this uh, March of 2018, they turned down an offer from San Isabel to buy the whole service territory and all the generating stations and such for uh, $1.1 billion. Mm. Wow. Well, uh, first, I would say that what my colleague Steve just mentioned about that $1.1 million offer, billion, 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 billion dollar, dollar yeah. offer, is I think that goes to show how much of a cash cow uh, Pueblo is to Black Hills Energy, because if they weren't willing to sell it for that kind of a price, they're obviously making a lot more than that. Um, secondly, I'd like to just correct uh, another statement that Mr. Thurston made, which is that um, anyone's really a, imp a pl implying that it's going to be a sudden rate decrease after May 5th. It's not. It's going to be a gradual process. We're going to we're going to work through the process of creating our uh, public utility or whatever route we decide to go. And eventually, the prices, the prices, the rates will go down. Um, mm -hmm. It'll take us paying off that uh, price that we're talking about of the uh, the off ramp and um, condemnation and all of that. Uh, however, there's evidence from other cities who have made this move to show that after that payoff is done, the rates do decrease. And so that's what we're looking towards. This is not necessarily um, uh, an immediate. Uh, benefit that we're going to see right. in the rate reduction at, uh, category. However, even for some of us who may be old enough that we're not going to see those rate reductions, our kids and grandkids and the future of Pueblo will be better for it. Mm -hmm. So then, does the option then, when you talk about the vast uh, uh, range that we cover, do we have to take over the whole thing? Or are we just talking about Pueblo? Well, you know, and I'm, I'm going to say that the, have the city of Pueblo have be the only aspect isn't feasible because there would be pockets in the city that wouldn't be covered if the city just itself takes over. So the, the, the full network really is the, the, the option. I okay, think so that was with the reports that, uh, that were done on behalf of, of you folks there. So it's, it's something that when we talk about 1.1 billion, it could be less than that, it could be more. But the, the mayor was talking about 300 million in his calculations and that didn't it didn't have a, a rate decrease it was we keep the rates the same so the question is is uh let's give it five years before uh it gets bought out which is low since boulder's already in at 10 years then you have 20 years that bonds have to be bought to pay off and let's just say it's it's 300 million that's the numbers the mayor using it's it's not going to drop the rates if you go up to 1.1 billion now you have the big question is, are we going to have 25 years from now going to have rates that are higher than they would have been? So
So, so maybe that's really the question. I don't want to argue over timelines, no. but it's important. Wasn't it true that if we bought the generating stations, and I think the big one out of the airport, that right. we would be able to sell the power? Would that be able to subsidize part of the cost of this? And I do think that when we were looking at the presentation, it was 800 and some million. I think the 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 basics without the generators and all the stuff was 400. So that's 432 million. So right. it was 800 and some. So we're looking at almost a billion dollars sure. or more. Uh, a couple things. Um, the eight hundred and fifty-eight billion, or what? A million. No, excuse me. Because no. sometimes we, it's easy. The numbers to are so almost, big. The numbers are very big. Um, the that's for the distribution system only. That's also the highest cost that the consultant estimated. Now, um, you can argue, and Black Hills is that, gee, it should be higher. But they actually. Uh, argued that, that that is a ex conservative estimate and that it, in fact, should be a lower number at the end of the day uh, for the distribution system. A couple things to keep in mind in all this. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, there already is uh, a debt being carried by Black Hills. It's $350 million. They have it on their books, and we, as ratepayers, are paying... $18.1 million a year in interest payments. Yeah. Say the, the, an enterprise utility took it over. Randy likes to call it the government. I'm going to call it an enterprise utility <laughs> because it's heads or tails of the same kind of thing. The PUC, the Colorado Public Utility Commission, is a regulatory body that is required to be interacting with Black Hills today. So it's a heavily rigged game uh, that that it is that it has been hard to work with them uh, for the for the citizens of Pueblo and frankly they've done a poor job of hold, of helping hold rates down over time mm -hmm. historically mm -hmm. since Black Hills took over but but if if the regulated sorry if if we were able to break away we could in fact refinance that three hundred fifty dollar loan let's just call it that mm -hmm. uh, we could probably refinance it instead of the five point two percent that Black Hills pays, mm -hmm. we could probably refinance it anywhere from three and a half to, to the low fours. That's what the estimate was stated at City Council. Okay. I used an estimate of 3.75%. When you do that, you knock down the 8.1 million a year in interest payment to 13.1. Mm -hmm. So right there, you save $5 million. Mm -hmm. So in the world of risk, the if this, if, if <coughs> a, uh, if an entity like an enterprise utility borrows money at a significantly lower rate, just for that same amount, well, we end up coming out ahead. If I can ask Steve a quick question, let's say this is five years from now. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you say five would be the fastest it could happen? Um, based on, on, I wouldn't necessarily, probably, well, but it, depends, but, but, but it depends, on, depends on the scenario, if it's, if it's yeah, Pueblo, okay. Pueblo County, or what. Well, it, it, Really depends on the scenario. You know, so I'm going to then say, what are the rates going to be five years from now? Black Hills rates? No, the, the bond interest rates. rates. The interest rates, the bond rates. I mean, Hard it's, to say. It's, a, it's an unknown. It's an unknown. And, and, I, I don't disagree. And, and, and my issue with all of this is we don't have a plan, we have a study. Mm -hmm. We haven't looked at all of the hundreds of the different things that need to be looked at, which include billing. Uh, the, the computer system, the IT system that is owned by Black Hills will stay with Black Hills because it's connecting all the units. Excel just spent $700 million on a computer system. Show me where that's calculated at. Now, yeah. now, let me finish, and then we have another issue, and that's the billing. With uh, People pay their electric bill when the bill comes due. So they put a brand new system in day one, and it takes six or seven months before they work out the bugs, or even two months. What happens with that billing? These are things that need to be talked about. These need to be looked at because all of a sudden you put all the citizens at risk because just like the Board of Waterworks, they can lien your property. When you have a government-owned utility, they can lien a property. So now people are having their homes liened because of electric bills. Well, let's, let's talk ahead. about that because we, we, we were well, talking about Black I'm, Hills, and I know they came into the picture, and there was some relief and some skepticism there, I think. 
But I do think that they have the infrastructure. So as opposed to having city council making decisions, which frightens me more, I think probably having the Board of Waterworks made more sense because they have this infrastructure. Don't they have the system that could do the billing and, and, and everything? I'm gonna assume that they do. Let's just, just assume that they already okay. have it in place, okay? So, so that question then, uh, or that concern, is put to bed. I don't think anybody well, knows. Janet, I can say it's not put to bed because the electric bill and tying in all the meters coming into a central thing to kick the bill out, you know, they've got the ability to have everybody's address where to send it to, and that's probably where it ends. These are all things that need to be looked at. You know, I'm not the bad guy. I'm not saying that, that the, I'm just saying that we need to take time. We need to take time and look at all these issues because the worst thing is this happens and all of a sudden it's a disaster. And people are gonna say, well, how come we didn't talk about this before? Well, and I think with anything, there are gonna be mistakes or, you know, there's gonna be hurdles along the way. We don't expect to go into this and clear sail our way through. We only have to look north. But Jeannie, you wanted to say something. I was just yeah. gonna ask about the studies because we've done two, we've paid good money so far. We have, and, and if I can start with that, um, I'd like to just correct another thing that the Mr. Andrew, uh, Mr. Thurston said, which is that we commissioned the the study. We did not commission the study. The city council did, and so. And who was it that did the study? Just uh, for it was a company called EES Consulting. And um, so they have a lot of experience in this. Do, this is what they do. Okay. Would you agree, Randy, yeah. that they were? Well, I'm, I'm going to say consultants. Okay. Here's here's the thing with consultants. Because when I was on city council, we had consultants. Consultants had what they wanted to present. I wanted the facts. I think if both sides were truly dealing with the facts, the studies would be closer together there. There's, there's a big gap. Okay, let's let uh, Jamie finish too. So there was a lot, like, like Steve said, there's a lot to unpack in what Mr. Thurston just said. So since he seems to be arguing for staying with the devil we know, let's talk about the devil we know. Like you mentioned earlier, Pueblo is a low-income community. Our median household income is 17,000 less than the national median household income and 26,000 less than the state median household That's income. Meanwhile, Pueblo pays, uh, I think it's 36% more than the national average and 41% more than the state average. So that's the devil we know that's being argued that we stick with. So yes, there are some unknowns, but we also know that right now we're being taken advantage of by what amounts to a big bully holding the public community by the ankles and shaking all the change out how, of the How did that happen? I'm cons confused on how, I mean, were they paying, extracting top rates when they took over, or was this just a series of people not paying attention? Because we had the PUC, and I remember when I first moved here, there was a lot of complaints about Black Hills then, and I said, isn't there a utility commission that's supposed to address these things and they and the and the comment were well you know so but yeah so um within one year of black hills buying the utility from aquila uh so our local social service networks were already reporting major strains on the low-income community here in pueblo because of the high rates of black hills energy that's one year after they took it over since then they've been able to request a rate increase every two years as per state statute and like clockwork at every opportunity, they have sought those rate increases, and the PUC has acted as a rubber stamp for those increases. And so every two years, our rates go up, and every two years, they go up again and, and again. So we know what we're looking at in the future with Black Hills Energy, which is high rates, way higher than we should how, be paying. How is Black Hills on the whole? Because we've made this agreement, and, and everybody's backed it to go by 2035, I think, to green, and so my first thought was if we do more solar and we do more green energy, how does that affect the rates then? Um, I don't know if anybody... Can, I'd like to back up. Okay. Um, Randy's made some points. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, Jamie's made a point. I'm going to back up um, and, and address five of them that, okay. that, that aren't still on the table if I can. Yeah. First, um, the rates increases, uh, the bill increases. I call it bill increases because there are all kinds of writers. When you just look at <coughs> rates, it's it's the bill total that you need to look at because yeah, the writers the have fees. been added. Yeah. And there are all kinds of fees that have been tacked on that, that um, impact the bill. So the bill increases, the majority of them, happen between 2009 and 2012. That coincides with the permission granted by the PUC to construct the gas generators to 
200 megawatt gas generators out at the Pogo Airport generating station. That was the bulk of the increase. Um, I and have a question on that. How did they make a capital investment and then charge Pueblo people for something that they... Who owns it? The, they own it, right? They own it, so and, how and we, we pay the interest. Pay the bill? We, and we pay the interest on the loan through our bills every every month. Remember, yeah. I mentioned that three hundred and fifty yeah. million dollar loan that Black Hills carries. Uh, it's it's on that. So um, so rates since then have actually been more level, especially at the residential scale. At the commercial scale, in two thousand and thirteen and fourteen, there was a um, whiplash uh, impact on on many if not most commercial owners. In fact, the rate redesign that they passed in 2013, that took effect on August 1, 2013, increased money and revenues so much that Black Hills was scurrying around telling themselves inside behind closed doors, spend the money, spend the money. Because they have two choices. If they collect more revenue than they're allowed, they either have to refund it or they have to um, um, and they have to reinvest it in some way, so they decided to spend the money. Randy mentioned this, the, something called a SCADA system. It's a computer system. He mentioned $700 million. I asked one of the guys, the estimator with Black Hills, an estimator, I asked him how much uh, 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 replacing the SCADA system would cost here, and he, he estimated just ballpark 2 to $4 million. So let's not get caught up with the fact that we're going to have enormous expense there. It is true that that SCADA system, think of it as software that controls everything. They can read everything. They can look at wires, poles, individually, down to transformers outside your house. Uh, that's a very smart system, and you need someone running it 24-7. Um, and, and it will need to be reconstructed here. And he mentioned a whole lot of things that need to be thought through. Mm -hmm. That five-year window that he talked about is the time frame when that can happen. You cannot expect every, all of those details to be ironed out between now and May 5th. Not going to happen. So what I would say is that by voting to take the off-ramp on May 5th, it starts the process moving forward from here. And it will start a process of doing things like Getting bids on wholesale power coming down the road, that sort of thing. Yeah, because we can partners, sell our power. Partner, partnering with wholesale power generators who can sell us electricity at anywhere from 15 to $50 a megawatt hour as opposed to the $86 a megawatt hour that we pay for the, for the Black Hills uh, independent power producer out there at PEGS. Uh, Randy also said that uh, consultants, you know, come up with uh, facts that they, that they jury, ah, he didn't say jury rig, but consultants come up with information that they, they want their, that they think their client probably wants to hear. Well, Black Hills hired a consultant that was favorable to them. The city hired a consultant that, that Black Hills accuses was favorable to the city. I want to give you an example of this. Part, it, it, Boulder is a terrible example because it's a 10-year process that has yet to be completed. Let's look at some of the, the, the utilities that have actually broken away. Winter Park, Florida, which is an example that Black Hills' own consultant said, oh, it's bad. Black uh, Winter Park, Florida, today, uh, 15 years after they broke away, has a, a rate that's 20% lower than when they started. But when they started, it, it was very, there was a very small decrease in the rate. Uh, it, it has since accelerated significantly. Also, Winter Park, Florida made two decisions. One, they decided how long the bond's going to be and how long the payoff's going to be. So they you set can, the term. They set the terms, okay. and, and their, so, their, their buyout is, is a 20-year. Is a in Kit Carson, Rural Electric Cooperative down in New Mexico, it's a 10-year. And in 10 years, their rates are going to be dropping 30 to 40 percent. Back to Winter Park. In Winter Park, they spend four to five million dollars a year undergrounding their utility lines. If you think about the fact that Winter Park, Florida is in the middle of Hurricane Alley, that's an enormous investment that the community decided to make. The utility didn't do that. And that's a kind of thing in terms of local control that Winter Park said we need, we need better. So um, municipalizing the 
utility would give us more control over it, these it would absolutely So let's hear, because sure. I, I know Randy's jumping at the bit here. And first, I apologize when I rambled on because I threw a lot of stuff out there. <laughs> it's, it's frustrating when you're hearing it because so many things to be addressed. Yeah. I want to start with the rate situation. And again, I, I don't like to correct people, Jamie, because we're all entitled. But this shows from 2012 the actual rates for a residential a customer that's the average. And as you can see, it's actually come down since 2012. Now, I know what happened in 2010, 2011, 2012. And that is they had a new plant being built. It's almost like with uh, uh, the offer now, if they, if they paid a billion dollars for, for Black Hills, you've got to pay that it billion dollars back. Right. So, so rates will go up. So that's what happened in that period of time, you know, when the new plant was built. Rates went up. But if you really look at, at the, the charts on an average customer, then I want to take the issue of, of South Park, Florida. Winter Park. Winter Park. So I want you to think about the largest municipal-owned utility city in the whole country. Which is? Los Angeles. Okay. They were started in 1905. So they come like Colorado Springs. They grew up with the utilities. The thing is, they're not covered by a PUC to keep rates down. Uh, uh, the only thing that keeps rates down for them is the elected board. So the elected board makes those decisions, and, and the comment is, if you don't like your rates, you wait until the, the person comes up for election, and then you don't elect them. Well, the reality is, uh, in, in, in Los Angeles, the average in California, not comparing anybody else, but California that's covered by a PUC, is 44% higher than the average in California. Now that's exactly what is being proposed here, but what we, you're missing is if they had a PUC cap, it wouldn't be 44% higher. And, and nobody can predict the future, and I like to have that, I have some guarantees and some caps that are involved, because without them, anything can happen. The, spend, the spending decisions of the board, all you need is three out of the five board members to decide what they want to spend. And things happen, and, and uh, uh, people get hired that because it's a political situation that might not have been the best person. You have favors being done. I mean, all of these things take place, and it's like all of a sudden we're at that 44% higher, and people are going to say, well, we thought it was going to be cheaper because there was a place in Florida, the one we can find, that said it was lower. Well, and oh, I'm not right. sure California is a good example because they have to buy a lot of their power. They're not generating a lot of their power. At least they were, as I recall, but they're... Um, it's a good example when compared within California itself that the, the PUC regulated companies are 44% less than the municipal owned by the government. So can I, talk about to the, how many can I speak to the numbers real quick? Yeah. The numbers I mentioned, uh, the, the median household in income numbers I mentioned come from the most recent ACS1 report from the U.S. Census Bureau. The numbers I mentioned about our... Um, the rates that we're paying here uh -huh. in Pueblo come from the U.S. Department of Energy. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so... You you are got you your numbers right? from Camo. Um, are you saying this isn't correct? Are you saying these aren't correct? This, no, I understand. So, Jamie, you're that's saying the rates... Numbers. I, I, your rates this is the U.S. Department of Energy numbers. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying that we'll have that time to decide exactly what the correct rates are. Well, You're that, saying one thing, I'm so saying that, something different. To that end, you mentioned you don't like to go into things without guarantees. What guarantees exactly did you have when entering into this franchise agreement? Well, the franchise agreement was in 2010. Exactly, but that, right. doesn't, that yeah. doesn't answer the question. But I was an on-council in 2010. Uh, Senator Garcia... Okay, so what, was what guarantees did they have? What, do well, you know what guarantees there were in that? Okay, let me tell you something about guaranteeing and gambling. We can gamble and guarantee, or not have guarantees, before it goes to the vote of the people. As soon as it goes to the vote of the people, then we're stuck with all these things. Well, geez, heck, I didn't realize it was going to be that much. Oh, geez, well, I, I didn't think about that. The people are voting on a simple concept, and that is the rates are going to come down. The rates aren't going to come down. And then best case, when you take that billion dollar and you, and you amortize that out, uh, how, how could you even say that's a possibility? Let me just do a real quick time out and remind our audience who we're listening to. We have Randy Thurston here, Steve Andrews, and Jamie Valdez, and we're talking about the Black Hills off-ramp. You're listening to KLIC Radio, 98.5 FM. I'm Janet Wilson-Smith. <coughs> And uh, I have a, uh, a question, because I know and there's no fun. guarantees. I know there, there aren't any guarantees. But when you look at Black Hills as a whole, they're not in the state. They have a board. They have investors that they have to Correct. make. 
a lot of money for, and right. they're making a lot of money. I think the rate was 12%, wasn't it, that they were sending to their uh, investors? So yeah. more than that or less? 9.38 is a ceiling. Oh, 9.38. It's a cap. Okay. It's, it has to be below that. So typically it's 7 to 8%. Okay, so that's, I'm, I'm just using it as an example of an expense that wouldn't be paid out. And I don't think, I don't know, and I'm hoping that people don't think that immediately we do this, the rates are going to fall because we do have to pay back a lot of capital expense. And so they'll be using that excess money that would have gone to investors, would have gone uh, to reduce rates to pay back the invest investment part, right, Steve? Well, I sure. Steve I've said $117 million that goes out. Is that what you're saying? To what? To, uh, to Blackfield? Uh, $250 million is the tab for the total service territory going to Black Hills. Of that, probably $120 million is Pueblo's annual tab. Um, I want, let's, leave the, let's leave the California <laughs> example that Randy brought up, and let's just focus on Colorado. Okay. Now, admittedly, most of the munis are old. They're old. There's only one that's been recent. Yeah, because 1905. That, yeah, but uh, yeah. The, the most recent one was Lions back in 1974, and it broke away. Um, small, very small entity. Of the 29 munis in the state, they're, compared to Black Hills, Black Hills rates, sorry, their, their average bill for a residential customer who uses, for the Colorado Association of Municipal Utilities, who uses 700 megawatt hours of energy a month, the average bill is 122 bucks for Black Hills. The average bill for the 29 unis, population weighted, is 82 bucks. 122 versus 82. Mm -hmm. That's 49% higher. Let's round it to half again as much, 50. Mm -hmm. um, that is the difference that you can achieve long term. Mm -hmm. Short term, I agree that rates, rates would probably not go down much, if any, immediately. But there is, over time, there would be a differential between what Black Hills would have charged long term and what we the the municipal uh, utility sorry the the enterprise utility could uh, could arrange to charge. You mentioned the avoided cost yeah. of that you don't have to pay shareholders. There are lots of legal fees that you don't have. Last year Black Hills or the year before they spent 7.4 million on legal fees and PUC fees regulatory fees up in Denver and so on. Uh, that excludes the amount of money that Pueblo paid to hire lawyers to fight against Black Hills' lawyers and their proposed increases. There are a lot of avoided cost potentials. Um, we don't have to support the headquarters in South Dakota or even in Denver. We don't have to build a new headquarters out on Pueblo Boulevard uh, and Lake where they're, where they're proposing they've got land to build the new headquarters. There, there, there are lots of things that, that you can save money on mm -hmm. when you go through their, um, in, their effectively, it's called, it's called the Federal in Energy Regulatory Commission's report. It's kind of like an income tax report. You go through it and you find lots of things that you don't have to pay for. And a lot of numbers got thrown out. I'm just going to say this, mm -hmm. Steve, that we'll have time to show what the actual figures are. Because I totally disagree with everything that you just said as far as all of the increases and the costs and things along those lines. Did this not come up in the study? It did. Okay. Both did we, studies. It, okay, so costs, and you don't agree with? No, not, not with the cost. Here, here, here's what I'm saying about costs. There's two sides of the stories, and one will be accurate, and one won't. But so, if we take Black Hills, if we take the one somewhere in the middle, well, that's yeah. the truth, wouldn't that? Well, I, I, I'm just saying that, that, that there's a perception, and the perception is that the rates have gone up in the past, I think you even said in the past five years, Black Hills rates have gone up 40%. No, I didn't say in the last five years. No, no. Okay. I did not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, no, one, no. Of your, one of your articles in Pueblo West, you made that comment, because I did some research on it. The point I'm saying is there's a lot of misinformation out there, and I'm just saying let's get the information before we start Here, doing the work. Here's the one thing that I think of, okay, because we use Bingo Burger as an example uh -huh. of what goes on here and what goes on there. Pueblo is trying to attract businesses. Isn't it more expensive to have power here for businesses? Yes, absolutely. It, is. So, it was so almost so double. I think it was 50%. Depends on. More like 50, 40, 50, something. 40 or 50 percent more. 42 percent, that's the one, 43. Okay. Yeah. 
that's that's Colorado Springs had is Black Hills here is 43% higher than Colorado Springs for the per kilowatt hour paid by Bingo Burger. Okay. So do you for think residential, it's 37% more than Springs and 45% more than Denver. Okay, so who, who said they had the numbers? Do you need to use the numbers for um, the... So let's, let's... We did phase one study, and then we did a phase two study. So Correct, and Black Hills Energy commissioned their own study uh, from a, a consulting agency called... Uh, Concentric. CA Concentric, yeah. Um, and the thing I was going to point out is that when you say somewhere in the middle lies the truth, those studies weren't that far off from each other. Oh, so they Black Hills Energy study didn't come up with results that were that much different than the study done by EES. So Consulting. how did it favor Black Hills then? Because of the essentially they disagreed about the wholesale power angle. Um, wholesale power means you'd be buying it again. You wouldn't be buying it from the Pueblo Energy Air Pueblo uh, PAGS, the Pueblo Airport Generating Station, which is kind of like buying from Saks Fifth Avenue. Instead, you'd be buying. Do um, something the wholesale, there? the wholesale market, which is okay. more like buying from Walmart, um, it's a, it would be a substantially lower price. That's where the two consultants disagreed. Okay. Um, uh, that is is the primary. They also said some other things that that there could be. Um, I forget exactly what the term is, term of art, but it's it's not goodwill, but it's uh, going concern. Going concern. Thank you. Oh, okay. So, so um, Jamie. Uh, Steve was mentioning that uh, um, we can start buying our energy from the on the open market for much cheaper. The other benefit that comes with that is that we can decide our energy sources. So when you talk about our goal of 100% renewable energy by 2035, that's an immediate possibility. Uh, the, the EEF study, the numbers that they came out with were based on 70% renewable energy. They, in that study, they said if we did decide to jump, right now we're way less than that. I was going to say, what are we now? Does anybody know renewable mm -hmm. energy? I mean, 30, solar, 30, wind, whatever? We're supposed to be at 30% uh, by 2020, by this year, by the end of the year. Because so, I am not seeing it, but right, maybe so, it is. Fair amount of wind. So that, it, that gives be, us, oh, of course we have. Yeah, yeah. So the open market not only gives us that freedom of competition for best prices, but also the ability to choose our own uh, energy sources, other you know, that's basically what self-determination looks like. And I, I was under the understanding that Black Hills weren't really favorable to buying power from somebody who was creating more solar than they needed. Is that true? That right. they were Yeah, but Black, Black Hills does a lot of partnering up with the solar and the wind as part of the program. They're totally cooperating. Now, you need to understand, I'm not a Black Hills spokesperson. I'm a citizen, and, and that's where I want to come back to Common sense, because every, all these numbers are being thrown out and it just bothers me because the people are believing this stuff. Here's, here's the reality. The, the, the reality comes down to you're going to create new debt that doesn't exist today. New debt. And the debt is going to be the attorneys and the consultants that all have a buy-in of the game because this is going to create a lot of uh, uh, money to be generated. But when you really look at this $1.1 billion dollars, or $800 million, or $1.6 billion, because it's an unknown, that's brand new debt we don't have today. So you can sit there all day long with these numbers, and I, I want, want to finish. That has to be paid back. Right. And, and if you have it over 20 years, anybody can sit there and calculate and say that this is going to be more costly, it's not going to be less costly. So I don't want to get caught up on the numbers. Let's have the actual numbers be... Uh, put out in the newspaper so people can see it. And to your point of having the debt, we also have the income that's generated, and we can also sell power, so we have those two sources. Well, the, the Black Hills, from what I understand, and again, it's all to be verified, this $117 million deal that leaves Pueblo and all this, uh, I think it was last year was $26 million. So all these numbers get thrown out that it's like, let's, let's not throw numbers. Let's have in the newspaper... A list of actual numbers of what they are and then we don't have all this time wasted on going back and forth and pointing fingers how long have we been working on this because <laughs> i think as long as i've been about 10 years yeah now, i've been here eight the the um the city uh council voted on december 20 sorry september 25th 2017 to create a commission to study the off-ramp option um and that 
uh, as I would say, sort of the genesis of this. However, there were citizen complaints well before that. There was a large hearing uh, in August of 2016 mm -hmm. attended by some 500 people uh, where the PUC commissioners, all three of them, listened to concerns and complaints stated by uh, uh, people of Pueblo. Of the 50 people who testified, uh, two were in support of Black Hills, one was sort of on the fence, and everybody else was, was uh, had a complaint about Black about Black Hills. So uh, those are sort of the genesis times, I would say, in terms of uh, kind of interesting that Black Hills' reaction to that was to just before the vote, when they saw the, could read the tea leaves, they fired their previous uh, executive director, vice president of operations in Pueblo, brought in Vance Crocker, and uh, he then uh, sort of started a charm offensive, especially effectively launched in March of 2018 to try to change uh, the relationship between Black Hills and, and the community. And they've done a lot of both advertising and they've upped their donations a bit. Uh, they've done a lot of things to try to sway the community to, to not take this step away from, from their, them as the service provider. And I would like to address one point, okay, and that is, uh, De Lizario. De Lizari that's, that's me, thank you. And the, the point I want to address, and it's uh, a point that you have raised, Randy, is a lot of misinformation out there. Correct. And part of the misinformation is coming from an organization called Pueblo Cares that is apparently spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in TV advertising on chieftain uh, uh, ads and they are really telling the citizens of Pueblo that we are going to pay twice. I think that is an outright lie, and I would like you to address that. Please, Randy. Okay. Well, I, I'm, Manny, I'm, I really appreciate it. First, as far as any marketing that takes place from any direction, they're going to have a point they want to make. I don't want marketing on either side to impact what I consider the facts. And the facts, I feel, now will be laid out between now and the time we vote. I just want people to be paying attention on that. Because mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, the city council told the citizens of Pueblo, you're going to be the jury now in this trial. Mm -hmm. And any jury trial that we love this country to live in has uh, two attorneys on both sides. You want to hear both sides. If you just heard one side of the story, uh, uh, every bad decision that can ever be made is made. So that's where I'm coming from. But as far as a paying twice, he, uh, when I was there at the library, I heard uh, Mayor Gratazar say, yeah, I guess you could say we are paying twice. The reality is there's a plant that was built um, that is state-of-the-art, and it allows us to use natural gas, not coal. There's zero coal being here for the citizens of the c city of Pueblo. But then you have this, this new uh, thought process um, with uh, uh, what happens to the plant. It's been paid, paid for over the last 10 years. What happens to the plant? Well, it uh, doesn't matter. If it's used or doesn't get used, it still has to be calculated in that value. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens, that will be included in the, in the bio. So we will be paying for the plant twice. When you talk about natural gas, are you talking about the fracking gas that they're pulling out of the ground? Or is that it's natural gas. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying okay. that, that there's a complaint about coal. Coal was the cheapest. Actually, nuclear is the cheapest. And we had a chance back for nuclear, uh, and the same people now that are complaining about black hills rates uh, said, no, we don't want nuclear, we don't care how cheap it is. So go yeah, ahead. I, I think didn't the right. citizens are ready for more green. I, yeah. you right. know, I see that in the future. And, and so and I, green I, is a little bit more expensive right now. Right. Mm, but not, we're, not more expensive no. than gas or coal. What happens okay. if we uh, end up with a a company that comes in with new technology, takes our garbage, and makes energy out of it. I, how, does I love that, it. how does that affect what we're paying? Does that help the off ramp, or does that hinder because then the rates are cheaper? So I, I don't know. Waste to energy systems have been around for about uh, 50 years, could be longer, I'm not sure. Started on the East Coast. Um, waste to energy systems, burning trash. Mm -hmm. um, are, are one way to to uh, provide energy to the system, um, to diversify the energy sources. Uh, and indeed, we're going to keep generating waste for a long time. 
the question, there are a couple of questions uh, there. One of them is, what are the pollutants that you're putting into the air, and where are you doing it? Uh, um, it's kind of like with the Denver, uh, Denver benefits by having coal-fired power plants right down here in Pueblo. They don't have it dumped into their air, air shed directly. It, it it's impacts the citizens of Pueblo while not helping them with their utility bills. When it comes to waste to energy, where we locate the plant, the farther you put it away, then there's more energy uh, used in taking it there. Uh, and then will you, what sort of sorting will you do? Because you, there are certain things that you don't want to burn, definitely. And uh, I know that advanced technology, they've got scrubbers. I'm, th I'm thinking yeah. of the city like Toronto, which has two and a half million people at that time when they yeah. put in their plants with the scrubbers. But there is, a co there are companies now that have closed loop systems that don't have stacks and they're creating. And I just wonder if we're going to take that into consideration when we do this. And do we want to go more uh, green? Which I think is what's the thing, right? Solar and wind. I mean, we have over 300 days of sunshine in Pueblo. Why don't we have more solar? And this is what people are asking, right? We're the prime location have? for it. And, and right now, uh, it costs less to build new uh, wind and solar installations and operate them than it does to continue operating an already uh, existing coal-fired plant. So when we talk about the prices going down, there it is right there. I mean, the, our, our source, the, the price of the energy source being lower is obviously gonna help us to lower those rates. Now, we talked a lot about numbers and a little bit about timelines. Um, and I'd like to talk about the timeline because there's this uh, idea being conveyed that we're rushing into something and, and we have to slow down and think about it. Well, if we miss this opportunity, if we don't make this decision by August, we lose our opportunity for the next five years. We're mm -hmm. stuck in this franchise agreement until at least 2025. So there is some urgency to make this decision. Now, in 2017, September of 2017, when Mr. Thurston was running for mayor, he seemed to understand that urgency. He said, and I quote, Black Hills is like a cat with nine lives. Those lives were all used up long ago with their nine rate increases. There are, ex there are expert resources and commit uh, committees to tap into to seek non-biased facts and opinion or options. As mayor, I will task them to explore any and all options and uh, within six months select the one that provides the most dependable, sustainable, and most importantly provides the lowest energy costs for our citizens and business. The time for action is now. So a, over a year ago when he was running for mayor, he, he seemed to understand that urgency, whereas now he doesn't seem to understand that. Well, and being a resident of Pueblo, I have to say, we had more meetings and dragged more stuff out, in my opinion, that I would like to see some decisions made quicker on things, and I have a feeling that it just goes on and on. So Randy, you want Well, to Jimmy, I appreciate you bringing that up, because I stand by that statement 100%. 100%. Time for action and, no, now? Well, okay. You know, <laughs> please don't become a politician. And start <laughs> well, you said out. that. You, said you, you just said you stand by that statement. I, and I do. But when you talked about getting accurate information, did I not say getting accurate information? Yeah. Did I not say bring in the professionals? I stand by that. I want the lowest rates, the highest quality, and the most reliable power for the citizens of Pueblo, period. I will always want that. Are you happy with the studies, Randy? Do you no. think they were? No. Here's what I'm not happy with. Uh, the university came out and made a presentation to city council. I thought that was genius. You know how much it costs? Zero. The studies, look, look at a taxpayer's dollars. The study was $350,000. I mean, I'm sitting here in shock. We spent $350,000 on a study that the same information is available to the university at no cost. Can I, I mean, add, those are the things. No, did, did we not have one of the best engineering programs in, at CSU? We do. Did I hear that? Did, no, yeah. we don't? But I, I would say that the, <laughs> the retired <laughs> head of the engineering department is, is that with Jane Fraser? Jane Fraser? She, uh, she was extremely disappointed with the, with the uh, product that was shared at city council. Extremely disappointed. You're and talking she, about the, the plan? The presentation. The, uh, yeah, the present presentation back in December. Okay. She was extremely disappointed with it. So why were they involved? That's a very good point. I, why can't, I can't answer that. Well, answer that. The, the thing that, that they were tasked with, does this make sense? The questions that I'm asking, the questions that citizens are asking, 
and not saying this is better and all that. That's what they were tasked with. And guess what? They said it's, it's the, there's too many unknowns. It's not a feasible situation. You start throwing these big costs out. We want the citizens to know the good, the bad, and the ugly, and let, let them do it. We have the ability to get good information here. Well, and I and think this goes for anything. If you have a young couple who are buying a house, there's no guarantee that the furnace isn't going to go. That you know, and when I did mortgages for a living, you have to talk about these things. You can't go into something and think. It's going to be great, and all I'm going to pay is 500 a month. But you, you know, you own it, so you're responsible for the maintenance and the care and the capital. Let mm-hmm. me just remind our audience who we're speaking with. It's KOIC Radio 98.5 FM. I'm Janet Wilson Smith, and I'm here with Randy Thurston, Steve Andrews, Jamie Valdez, and we're talking about the Black Hills off ramp and uh, getting. I'm hoping some good information out to our listeners so, because you're going to be voting on May 5th. And uh, it's a it's a big cross. So, Steve. Um, on on something Randy said, I want to keep stressing: if the citizens of Clay on May fifth, it doesn't mean that we are going to have an enterprise utility set up in five years, four years, or eight years. It means that the process is going to start for them, and many of the uncertainties that Randy is concerned about, and they're valid. Many of those uncertainties and those risks will be answered and addressed through things like condemnation court and so on. Yes, that process will take a number of years, shouldn't take anything like Boulder. Boulder's a bad example there. No other place in the country that I've seen that has actually broken away has taken more than five years. And I've done about seven or eight case studies. Can so you? so I, I guess I would say that, that there, there will be time to address the questions proceed, as we proceed and it will cost money. Then the Board of Water Works has committed $10 million that they're going to pull out of a, a piece of real estate up in, in above Leadville to, to fund that effort. And if we get at the end of the five years, if it doesn't make sense, Randy, I'll be with you and say, no. It, we, 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 gambled, we, we gambled $10 million to, 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 try to, get, to try to determine whether or not it made sense. It ended up not making sense, and so we're going to stay with business as usual. Can, can, some, can I get important. somebody to explain con- condemnation uh, for the listeners? Because when we condemn something, what does that mean? Because we've used the term twice. I just want to make sure our listeners know uh, what that means. Right, and I, I'm going to address that with the election, with what happens with the vote. If it was voted yes, no matter how bad the numbers are, the vote's there. It's, it's not like you can so say... So you're saying if the people say they you, want it... No matter what the, what the information, it's too late. We're already there. Okay. Now, no, the, 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 mm-hmm. Jamie, please. Not. Please, okay, please. Okay, well, we'll get... Please. To, we'll, I mean, this, yeah. this is important. I'm, I, again, I've been very patient listening to a lot of information said. The citizens need to make a choice. Don't vote no until you know for sure of what, what it is. So, so here's with, uh, with, with the election. Um, May 5th, they vote yes. They're giving a blank check with no expiration date on it to the municipality. There's no expiration date. When you say municipality, you're talking about the Board of Water Works? Well, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a government thing, so whoever that is, so say the Board of Water Works, they have a blank check. Now, the blank check means that all of a sudden it's, it's $1.8 billion because the attorneys got in there and the going concern was so much more Every dime that gets spent will have to get paid back. Mm-hmm. Now, Board of Waterworks has a blank check that they can go and, 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 and pay for it, and then it gets passed 100% to every rate payer. So these risks were saying it's not like, well, uh, we'll throw the keys back to the car. No, we, we own it. And, and, and they will have that blank check book, and it will be whatever it is. Then you look at the condemnation. The condemnation in the ballot issue says that you can condemn in the city of Pueblo and anywhere in the state that is connected to this to make this work. And, and Jimmy, please don't... So we're condemning a, a facility, a generating facility? Just it, to be clear, so the listeners know. So when we say condemning, we're saying it's not, it's too old? Here's, here's, it's not here's what the, here's what what the condemning mean? means. The condemning means is that uh, it has to be done by a, mis- a municipality. It can't be done by a business. You go and you say it's in the citizens and the, the people's best interest 
that we take it back. They're, they're not willing to sell, so we're going to take the right from, from free enterprise and say we're going to condemn. When I was on city council, we always did that as the last resort. And uh, two times in eight years, we had small condemnations. It's something you don't want to do. You don't take a, that. It's, it's no big deal. It's a huge deal. Then uh, the courts decide what the value is. So now everybody that's an investor or anybody that owns a house and somebody comes in and now they're forced out and somebody else decides the value. Now, again, this is going to take this out for a long time because this is a huge enterprise. This is a billion dollar company with so many moving parts. I mean, you can spend a month just on one part of it and you've got hundreds of pieces. Okay, so Jamie. So uh, there's this... Um, this concern for accurate information. So let's be accurate. Pueblo City has the, the right to condemn, condemn assets in Pueblo County. They do. Not further than Pueblo County in the state. That's regulated by the PUC. That's what I was saying was in, inaccurate. Well, no, I, I, I agree. We can't, we can't condemn assets outside of Pueblo County. That We have to go to the PUC for that. I, I, and I Which agree. is the, pub, the Pueblo public, public, utility, public utility, utility Commission. Okay. Utility okay. Utility now, now, and they're still going to have you. some control over rates yes. and things too, there, right? There'll be three right. players involved. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, the, that's the Public Utility Commission in Denver, and a district court. And, and the district court will be most involved in the, in the condemnation process because uh, they're going to... Uh, by the way, we don't have to go to condemnation there can be a negotiating step before that. They agree it's on the unlikely that there will be a willing buyer and a willing seller at the price. It, it, will it, be would then, it, it then would go to condemnation and condemnation court. The court would decide based on information from both parties and historic information and statistical information what the price should be. And then, uh, and it's that kind of information down the pike that will determine whether or not when you get to the Next off-ramp, whether you take it or not, whether you actually set up an enterprise utility with a board of waterworks, or if you just stop and say, we're going to go back to Black, we're going to stay with Black Hill. Okay, okay and I'll go back to the mayor's comment that he made, because he said, somebody said, what if we didn't take the off-ramp and we just wait up? It's going to be five to eight years, right? And we've got ten years left, why don't we just wait? There was no guarantee that Black Hills would sell us the assets at the end of that Right. Anyway. Not, not only that, but they're going to be investing in more yeah. capital, so it would which cost more, <laughs> plus their markup on it, which if we invested in it, we wouldn't have a markup on it on ourselves. Okay. Not that so it's it's every just, two years, them seeking rate yeah. increases. Okay, okay so I, I just want to do a closing statement for anybody so we can maybe wind it down, but if you have something that you want the listeners to, to understand that we didn't cover, maybe we can <coughs> talk about that. Uh, our audience, we're listening to Jamie Valdez, Steve Andrews, and Randy Thurston. We're talking about the Black Hills off ramp. I'm Janet Wilson Smith. And let's start with Jamie. Do you want to? Sure. So, as I mentioned earlier, Pueblo is a low income community. My neighborhood, the east side, is a low income community within a low income community. My neighbors, friends, and family are burdened by expensive electric bills. And, and to that end, more than 1,700 homes get shut off every quarter due to the high rates of these electric bills from our electric provider. This is a great disadvantage, a major disadvantage in the words of our District 2 City Councilman Larry Atencio to the community of Pueblo. Now, you know, um, yes, there are some unknowns going into this. A lot of situations in life, you deal with unknowns. That's just a part of life. Um, we do know what the situation is if we stay with Black Hills Energy. It keeps us in the category of some of the highest rates in the country, and definitely in the state, and it keeps us paying a higher energy burden, dealing with a higher energy burden, which is the, uh, the percentage of monthly income being paid to your energy bills than we should be paying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Steve? Um, there's, there's been a lot of concern that, that Pueblo is walking the plank and that no one else has walked lately. Uh, <laughs> you know, that they were going to take, man, is this a huge risk. Well, in the world of gambling, in the mecca of gambling, in Las Vegas, MGM Resorts, which has a load fairly similar to the size of Pueblo's, MGM Resorts broke away from Nevada Power back in 2016. Uh, three days ago, I talked to a key player there who was involved with that, 
and he's and I asked him how are rates compared to what they were, and he wouldn't share it. But he said, let me tell you, here's our bottom line, and this is the thing that matters. We are very happy with the financial decision we made. And they had to buy out from Nevada Power, just as we would have to buy away from Black Hills. It's a little more complicated with us than it was then, because they're just, they, they bought away from, they bought into buying wholesale power from another provider. And they saved a oh. lot of energy. Sorry, they saved a lot of money by buying wholesale power from another player. They won't tell us how much, and I will find out hopefully within the next couple of weeks. But uh, the, the point is that there are savings opportunities there. Yes, there, there are unknowns. Uh, I don't disagree with that. Uh, this is, uh, I'm going to disagree until the end of time with Randy about the fact that this is not a permanent off-ramp. It is the next off-ramp decision. It's the next fork in the road. Uh, and I recommend that people vote for 2A uh, to take that uh, next off-ramp. Okay. And Randy. <laughs> yeah, I, this has been great. And I appreciate both of you because your heart is for the citizens of Pueblo. There is absolutely no doubt. And we're all, we all as Puebloans should be there. I think one of the realities uh, that we're dealing with is what really happens May 5th. May 5th is permanent. You know, if we vote no, then it's not permanent, and then we have the five-year opportunity, and then we have the 10-year opportunity. But if this gets voted, what you're giving permission immediately is for there to be a blank check that has no expiration date. You're giving the right, which doesn't exist legally, for a condemnation to take place in the city of Pueblo and anywhere in the state of Colorado. And you're taking away the future vote of the people. Now again, as I say this, don't believe me. There will be plenty of opportunities to see the actual ballot question. It will be a four-page ballot question. The title has already had litigation over it because it was too confusing. Because right now, if people went and they voted based off of emotions, um, it's, it's over. The, the, the city, the municipality takes takes it over. I'm saying I've never seen a good decision made emotionally. Please look at all the facts. There's plenty of time. Keep an open mind and just realize that there's obviously a disagreement that that's a Steve and Jamie think that if you vote yes, then we wait five years and we decide we can throw the keys back. That is not the case. So again, please, everybody needs to get informed. I'm looking forward to many more conversations and stuff to make sure that people get the information. And let me just ask you, all of you, do you think that Board of Waterworks has been fiscally responsible to the people of Pueblo? Yes, they have the lowest rates along the Front Range. Uh, their rates, uh, I've got them here. And I'm mentioning this, Randy, because it's not, you know we're giving them a blank check, but there's a board of five members that are elected to uh -huh. take charge of decision-making in the Board of Waterworks, so we would hope that the public would have some, the citizens of the public would have some recourse and to oppose things that they didn't agree with. Um, you know, we could talk about the board members next time or who's on there, but we don't know if they're going to be the same people. But there are some things in place, too, so. The, the, when it comes to the Board of Waterworks, if you want to judge them by the, the rates, uh, Randy pointed out in his uh, op uh, an op-ed last weekend that uh, uh, there's been an inflation rate of, of uh, the charge for a thousand gallons of water. And indeed that's true. Uh, uh, since 1981 is, is what you can, anyone can look up so on. So that's that. the minimum you get billed for a thousand gallons. Well, I'm not uh, sure. If there's a fixed charge. Two thousand. Okay. Yeah, there's a fixed charge as well as a charge per thousand. Okay. Uh, it, it varies up and down the front range how you, how you bill. But their rates have indeed gone up. Uh, and they've gone up a little more than the cost of inflation. Uh, the, uh, at the same time, Black Hills rates in the last 10 years have gone up substantially more than the Board of Waterworks rates during that very same 10 years. Uh, so I would say that the world of fiscal responsibility to the citizens of Pueblo and the responsiveness to the citizens of Pueblo, that they have demonstrated uh, good fiscal uh, management. Um, and I wouldn't say the same for Black Hills. I would say that they do what uh, investor-owned utilities do, which is to uh, uh, collect revenue, hold their costs down, and collect as much revenue as they can uh, through the game that's played up at the Public Utilities Commission. Okay. 
Okay, and the other thing that came up when uh, Mayor Greta was talking was that the fact that Black Hills were paying pretty big salaries. <laughs> I think it was pretty, pretty much well beyond what people and and maybe does the Board of Waterworks do they make money? Do they yep. get paid? But they, I mean, they're they're in the hundreds of thousands of dollars and low hundreds of thousands, and most of their management is as under two hundred thousand. I think one is above that. Um, when the, they were talking salaries, it was a million. By, by, by comparison, one. it was uh, the retired uh, CEO just got four point one million, and the current Lynn Evans, I think he's getting two point three or something like that. That, that you know, that's that is typical for an investor-owned sector. I don't blame them necessarily it's just the reality yeah. of the investor owned utilities and nationwide <laughs> nationwide investor owned utilities cost more than unis in, yeah. in 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 their charges to citizens and that's part of the reason okay, if i can say yeah. something here and steve i appreciate you saying that about it being national uh black hills from my, the research i've done they serve 1.9 uh residents 1.9 what million million, million. Okay. yeah 1.9 million residents the city of Pueblo, I think it's 50, 55,000, 56,000. Mm -hmm. So if you look per, so if you take 2.9 million or whatever the number is that the president gets, and you divide that by 1.9 million, it comes out to, what, a couple bucks uh, per person. If you take a couple hundred thousand for 55,000 for uh, 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 for Seth running it, and I don't know if people... Oh, so you're make. doing it on a percentage. Well, it has, it has to be on a per let's, citizen. Now, let's let's keep keep it I'm, I'm going to finish, Jamie. Or that his is double that. So on a per person level, when you want to throw big numbers out, let's make it accurate, not like we're getting ripped off with all this money. And it's not that I'm a Black Hill supporter. I'm saying I want the facts. You can take any numbers. You can take numbers. You can take numbers. I can take numbers. And we can put what emphasis we want. I want the citizens to get the facts, not your numbers, not my numbers, anybody. But let's look at the reality of the picture here. Okay, so let's talk about accuracy for a second because okay. you talked, you said Black Hills Energy serves what 1.2 million, 1.9 million customers. Huh? The the point here is that not all of those customers are locked into an exclusive exclusive franchise agreement, which amounts to a uh, legislated monopoly. Colorado Springs, for example, buys some of their electricity from Black Hills Energy, but they are <coughs> able to buy it on the open market where there is competition for best prices. And so they're paying a lot less for their energy from Black Hills Energy than we are down here for our energy from Black Hills Energy. And it's because we are locked into this exclusive franchise agreement. So I, there was a lot so, of information here today. We don't want to over... <laughs> well, I think we need we to could, have we another one. for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are some town halls, and I would encourage people to get out to the town hall so that you can fully understand what's going on. Maybe some of the questions and answers that we had here today uh, weren't covered for some of the listeners, so if you get a chance to go out, uh, do take into uh, consideration that these are all over, going to be all over the place, and there'll be signs up. Um, I think I think we got the bulk of the information out, and I know I'm going to put up the uh, the conversation that Mayor Gratisar had as well, because I thought there was some good stuff covered in there. So. Uh, anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming out and, and Janet, thank you. <laughs> and, you know, we didn't want to gig, we didn't want to have a gig up. I love getting you didn't get to participate in that Lano because we didn't introduce you. <laughs> but I will have another round table and uh, uh, we'll have just just up. briefly let's announce the uh, the next uh, town hall. Yes. Okay. Do we know that? Next I'm not sure. Next town hall? Uh, it, it's a, with the League of Women. The League of Women Voters has an event scheduled on March nineteenth at six PM. I'm not exactly sure where it is. Is it the library? PCC. Oh, PCC of Hope Hall. Hope Hall. Hope Hall. Hope Hall. Hope Hall. Okay, great. Go down the stairs outside to the doors at the bottom of the amphitheater outside. Okay. Easiest way in. And, oh, and, we, and you'll have two of the speakers there here, myself and Steve. And okay. then uh, the mayor will be there, and so will uh, Vance, Crocker. Vance Crocker from uh, Black Hills. So okay. I have one question, since okay. you did mention my name. <laughs> Randy, is the off-ramp... Uh, tied in with the Board of Waterworks plan. In the franchise agreement, there's two off ramps, one right. at 10, one at 15 years. Are those tied to the Board of Waterworks? Can no. the city council merely vote to take the off ramp? They, they could, but that's not what's on the ballot. It's not, it's not tied to the I, plan. I mean, if 
the vote on May 5th is no, no they, they can't. Could, they could vote because the citizens didn't vote for this franchise. C correct. We heard that earlier, but they did right. not they, vote they for it. They did not vote for it. This right. is a, a charter change which will change the constitution of Pueblo. And Dave, I'm glad you brought that question up because, again, it's not. It's not part of the plan. It's not in the franchise agreement. You Which is not in the franchise agreement. The 10 and 15 year off ramps, that's in state statute. It's not in the franchise agreement. Yeah, we covered that. What, what I heard was that the puck actually caused the franchise agreement to be adjusted, and it may have been per state law. Well, state law preceded whatever the franchise agreement was. It's been there in statute for a good while. Yes, but well, well, I'm not saying that city council can't, I'm saying that city council can take the off ramp on their own. They, they can't. If, if the vote is no, they don't, that's nothing to do with the state. The, if that, the they can take the off ramp. Okay, so yeah. if the vote is no, no, there's there's hundreds of options. If the vote is yes, there's one option, and that's the city taking over the municipality, and there is no expiration. We talk about a ten year agreement, twenty year. This is a forever agreement with the city, and and people need to know that because they think that oh, just you know, we make a change and we can go back. That is not the case. Well, I. Can assure you that the people who pay, you know, uh, much less um, than in munis than than what we're paying Black Hills, if in 50 years or 30 years rates are substantially lower, people are not going to vote to uh, bring in a, an investor <laughs> investor on utility. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, people are happy uh, with their utility. If you talk with people in Fort Collins. Longmont and Loveland, where I've made presentations in the past, uh, they're extremely happy with their their munis, uh, and it, and it's going to take a while. It's yeah. not something that would happen overnight. It would, yeah. I frankly think, it would take decades uh, for the full benefits to accrue to the citizens yeah. of Pueblo. So, it so it's a long I view. I take the long view, even yeah. though you know, because my dad lived to a hundred. You know, yeah, I, mean, I, may, I make it. I may make it there. You know, <laughs> thirty years or twenty-eight years. But and I, and then I take that long. I take the long view from my kids and my grandkids, and I think that's and, and, that's and, and, important. And I here. appreciate it so much yeah. because this is a risk for a long view. Yeah. People that are thinking their rates are going to come down yeah. is not going to happen. Yeah. This is for the future generations. There's a lot that needs to be done, and if people, I mean, there's so many people right now that are struggling. Other options that could happen in this five years could have a quicker, immediate situation because it's done in correlation with what's currently there instead of a whole new shift. Yeah. So I'm just saying be careful. Well, it's going to be so, interesting. Like I said, get up to the town halls, get some more information, make sure you're knowledgeable about the facts, and, uh, and we'll leave it at that. You're listening to KYC Radio. Thank you, everybody, for joining in today. Thank Let's you, do another. And if anybody in our audience wants to come participate in the roundtable, gladly welcome it. Thank Janet, you. thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Janet. That was good. That's, <laughs> no, that's a lot of information. So, but it's so very